Oh wow, hi, it's me, Trixie Mattel, and welcome to another season of The Pit Stop, the show where we recap all things RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 4. And today, we are joined by a very lovely All-Stars 3 alum, and all the way from season two, Morgan McMichaels. Hello, gorgeous. We have a hooker from Long Beach, folks. Who's from Long Beach? Oh, where are you from? Not Long Beach. <laughs> How excited are you for the new season of All-Stars? I'm really excited for All-Stars because it's like the Olympics of drag, you know? Drag race, regular seasons are great, but All-Stars is, you know, yeah. is the one. All-Stars is hard. It is so hard. In a normal season, if you sort of say your lines and stand in the light, you can stick around a while. But in All-Stars, they're like, mm, we could see one of your bobby pins get the out. I wouldn't know what it's like to stick around for a while on All-Stars. What are your hopes and dreams and expectations for this season? This season's gonna be a wing dinger because these girls are coming for a wing blood. Dinger. A wing dinger. It's gonna be a wing dinger because these girls are from season nine and season ten. Some some season eight and seven girls. They are ready. They know. They're already. They're ready to do this. So drag race and drag in general has evolved so fast, so quickly. It also takes like a whole new set of skills to win Drag Race. Yes, and you know, as the seasons go on, it gets harder and harder, and the challenges become more complex. So, you know, you really have to be on your game. And All Stars is no joke. So yeah. I'm intrigued to see what these girls are going to do. Let's talk about entrances. Yes. I loved Trinity the Tuck's green. You did? I kind of did. It was very Sesame Street. She looked like a Muppet. Well, she always looks like a Muppet. I think she looked like Jinx Monsoon as a Koosh Ball. Oh. No. And I already thought Jinx Monsoon was Jinx Monsoon as a Kush ball, so. No, I liked it. I thought it was a great look. I also loved, even though it was a lot, she was giving me everything, was Moni Cart. You like that? I kinda did. I, I liked it, did. I did like it. I did like it. Did you clock the pussycat wig she had on under it? No. Oh yeah, she had a short little bowl cut. And you, you like a bowl cut. Now I've come full circle on the fantasy of knowingly being a drag and wearing something that's stupid. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Um, but I did love Jasmine Masters' suit as well. I like a, a fitted pantsuit. You like the suit. I, did you notice? I don't lesbian. think she had lashes on. No. Maybe she was wearing Debbie's. Debbie little, lashes? Little Debbie's. Debbie scooter lashes? Like fish lashes. <laughs> like me. When Naomi came around the corner. Oh my God. With the leg. The snatched up brown hair with the purple. I mean, it's offensive. It's offensive. But I was snapped. I'm snapped by her. Yeah. I think she's flawless. Pheromone she, was legitimately yes. Christina Aguilera. Yeah, but again, when you're not wearing pantyhose and you're showing off your, your legs and your butt, you have to make sure that they're foundationed. So Gia Gunn's outfit was very, very similar to Moni Cart's. I know, what was that about? But I didn't uh, really understand the whole connection with the denim boots and the pearls, and then it was just a lot going on. At least Monique's was cohesive and yeah. fluid. Valentina's look, how do you feel about that? I love it. It's very ballerina, black swan. Yes. But I love the nod to Alaska's trash bag. Because that's what it looks like. It looks like she's wearing a trash bag. But it's couture trash bag, so probably the worst entrance look was definitely Monet Exchange. How do we judge drag when it comes down to somebody's body pulling off something like that? Because if I, if you're not her and you wore that, you would look stout and naked. Right, but it's very like Playboy Bunny, Teddy in the bed, ready for some guys. I like a, a callback. Manila was wearing a look similar to her like Big Bird fantasy. I think this outfit was when she lip synced against Delta Work, MacArthur's Park. Sure did. And now she's been run over. The bird has been run over. So hopefully that means the end of the cheap looking, you know, kitschy <gasps> costumes. Latrice Royale came in. Did not love her walk on outfit. It was just a dress. I like a little more of a narrative. Give me a little more story. And standing next to Manila, whose outfit told a story, it was oh like. Oh God, yeah. Womp, 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 womp. Now, Miss Gia Gunn is the first all star to enter the workroom as an openly trans woman. I love it. I me am too. so happy that there's a trans woman in the workroom because, you know, we have tons of trans girlfriends mm -hmm. that are entertainers just as we are. And I think it's, you know, it's an opportunity to let Rue and the judges and the world see that trans girls can do it just as good as cis boys. Totally, and, in, and I mean, in our real drag world, people do drag before Drag Race. Mm -hmm. It's never about your gender or your height or your weight or whatever. It's about when you go out on stage, 
that audience reaction, and when you come back, that's oh, how yeah. you're judged. That's the only way you're judged. All right, it's the first mini challenge, and it's RuPaul's favorite, my favorite, your favorite. The library is open. I love the it reading was challenge. So good, but Farrah was terrible. It was that that reading was horrible. Valentina said that. Did she say you make your own outfit, your own outfits, and they're so bad that they, they hang, hang them themselves? Girl, that read was the T. I think Latrice really went in though. I think Latrice was good. Latrice said to Jasmine, "Welcome to a season where people will actually care about it." Latrice wins the challenge. Do she we agree? Has to. She, she has, has to. She has to win. She did turn that party. Valentina did too, but I preferred Latrice. So Gia Gunn comes in, guns a blazing. Gia Gunn's a blazing. Yes, letting them have it. She's talking about Monique's costume. She's talking about Ferris' talent. She's talking about Trinity's body. Her automatic thing is to go in and be like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're this, you're that, to try and bring them down to her level. It's weak. Be clever. Yeah, well. So it's time for the all-star spangled version of the variety show that we've seen in all-stars before. Rue bringing all of our LGBT brothers and sisters to be the audience is such a great idea. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, participating in that. Thank you for your service. Yeah, I think there was some high points. There was some talents where you're like, even if she wasn't in drag, that's amazing. Like Latrice throwing those flags, I'm like, that's just cool. No one else on Drag Race oh. I've ever seen do what Gia did on no. this episode. It was, it was stunning. And dignified and gorgeous. And, and it was graceful. It was cool and for her to be like, I'm not sure about other people's talents. And you're like, well, what about you? And then she did that, and as a viewer, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Justification. That was fierce. Justification. Let what you did in the talent show speak for itself. Speak for itself instead yes. of trying to destroy other people's mind frames you're and, right. and energy. Listen, there was a lot of middle of the road talents as well. Manila's uh, art. See, I could tell you weren't going for it, but I was like, there better be a reveal. And when there was, it was very vanilla. It was very comical. I really enjoyed it, but I just didn't think it was I loved it. on par with someone like Latrice or uh, Monique Hart. A good example of taking something kind of simple and turning it out, Monique. Oh, high right, energy yeah. cow number. Yeah, brown cow stunning. I was not a big fan of uh, Monet's. It was a basic costume and the singing was off key. When Gia said, but she started what are you soaking up? Why don't you soak up that sweat on your forehead? It's and I think Farah, I mean, I loved her costume. I loved the idea that she came out of a, you know, a makeup. That was compact. that was cool. So Pheromone is stripping. She's giving angles. She's beautiful, and then shablam. She, fell, she did an accidental death. She drop. did a shablamjula. Yeah, that was bad. It's not just the fall. It was the it's, thud. It's the thud. When you slip on stage, you've done it. I've done it. Uh, yes. It's about recovery. Yeah. And she didn't. The bottoms were Jasmine yes. and Farah, and I hate to say it, but I really think that was the correct thing. I would have put Monet in there as well. Gag! If I see a sponge and a cow every episode, I'm gonna break the TV. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a problem. The tops were Trinity the Tuck Absolutely. and Monique Hart. No. I think it should have been Gia. I think it should have been Gia too. Trinity the Tuck really sold me. That was a great way mm -hmm. to utilize a minute of talent. And to take something as mundane as putting, which mundane for us, putting tape on your dick and make it funny and compelling. It was paced well, the reveal at the end. And I like the lyrics, it was really informative. So we're back in the workroom and Trinity and Monique have to decide who they might send home. I'm having flashbacks. Triggered, yeah. Triggered. The girls get to give their deposition on why they should stay. Yes. Who do you think had a better story? Jasmine doesn't give a f doesn't she knows she's talented. She knows what she's capable of doing and has let the girls know that. Completely. Farah is the exact opposite. She's not confident enough and she's telling every reason why she should be kept. Who would you have chosen to stay? I would have chose Jasmine to stay because I know that I like confidence. Even if Farah bombed, it showed more effort and will to like succeed to me. So now it's time for lip sync for your legacy. Ooh. What did you think of that? Now, Mariah Carey, Emotions, classic drag song. Bring the house down number. Yeah, you could just stand there and really serve it, because the voice sells it. Completely. And I think that's what Trinity did. She stood there and sold it in a gown, looking gorgeous. Monique, when the wig came off. Not every number has to be the flips and the drips and the drops. By the end of it, she had no wig on and was, I don't know, laying down, wiggling? Rubbing and, and shaking. It like, was a lot. It's a no for me, dog. It's a no. Trinity wins the lip sync. 
Oh yes, and rightly so. Rightly so, and she, she sends home home our lovely Jasmine. I know. It's a bummer. As a fan of Jasmine's, I, I would have loved to see her stay longer. You're gonna see a lot more of Jasmine though. Jasmine doesn't look defeated. Not at I all. I really like. Absolutely. She was like, yes, it is what it is. And that's how Jasmine is. I'm gonna continue to do me. I'm gonna continue to be a bad bitch and I'm gonna continue to go viral and meme queen or meme queen. Meme queen. So we've had our first elimination and it's early, but who do you think's gonna win? I see I'm loving Latrice. Mm -hmm. I'm loving Trinity the Tuck. Uh -huh. I, and I love Naomi because she's a hometown girl and you know we have to take care of our hometown girls. So those yeah. are my, th my three for the top. I would say my pick would be Monet. But like my heart in my heart, Farrah. <laughs> I just You just want Farrah I just, yes, I listen, to win. Farrah's just so feminine and fragile, and I don't know, I guess I relate to that. <laughs> what was that Debbie Gibson song, Only in My Dreams? <laughs> yeah, I think that was the name of the song. I want to thank Morgan for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Gorge. And of course. congratulations on the crown of All Stars 3. I haven't thank really you. got to say congratulations. Thank you, that really means a lot. You didn't vote for me, and I don't take it personal. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week for RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 4. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. I just love that haircut. <laughs> <laughs>Hey, squirrel friend, when one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you.